Hi, you're watching Join News. Uh, we are taking you live to Parliament where we are watching three things. A vote on President Ekufado's nominees for the Supreme Court, a vote on his latest ministerial appointments and on key revenue measures. Let's listen in. Mind. These two justices, with all fairness and with all humility, we have no qualms about their individuals, their individual capacity. We don't hate them, but we are saying that we cannot sit and watch you just jump over others. And then tomorrow, when others want to come, they will use you as a yardstick. We don't want to set a bad precedent. And I'm calling on all of us, as members of this house, to know that yes, we may be willing to do the presidency bidding, but as we all are gradually turning ourselves into the those powers outside, who tend to want to manipulate this house, we should be careful because we will be weakening this house. At least for once, yes, it's true, we have never rejected any Supreme Court justice here. But for once, let's tell the appointing authority that we are widening, we are opening our eyes so widely. And let's let this good president to prevent a future government from using the same vehicle to bring people who simply are cotoying or seem to be cotoying to their whims and caprices is the reason why they are bringing them. If we do that, we'll be doing a great service to our country and our individual concerns. I thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to continue. Who will be the last contributor from the, the last contributor from here? Yes, yeah, Honourable. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute to the discussion on the motion to approve His Excellency's nominations for appointment to the Supreme Court. Mr. Speaker, Article 125 of our constitution says that justice emanates from the people and shall be administered in the name of the republic by the judiciary which shall be independent and subject only to this constitution. Mr. Speaker, clearly the judiciary is a very important arm that must be insulated from issues of partisanship and perception of bias. And as a member of the Appointments Committee, Mr. Speaker, having listened to all the nominees, I am very satisfied that the committee was right by its majority uh, decision to approve all the nominees that are before us. I want to also respond to some of the concerns that have been raised by colleagues on the other side, one of which is that even retired, according to Honorable Dafia Mako, retired judges are asked to continue to listen to cases. Mr. Speaker, I don't see why that is an issue, because if you read Article 145 of the 1992 Constitution, Article 145, Clause 4, it clearly states that notwithstanding that he has attained the age at which he is required by this article to vacate his office, a person holding as a justice of a superior court or chairman of a regional tribunal may continue in office for a period not exceeding six months after attaining that age, as may be necessary to enable him to deliver judgment or do any other thing in relation to proceedings that were commenced before his previous to his attaining that age. So, Mr. Speaker, clearly, the Constitution allows a retired judge to continue to listen to a matter for a period of six months. So, I don't see why that is even an issue to be raised here. Mr. Speaker, I have also listened to contribution from uh, Honorable Muntaka, who today is expressing concern that people have been appointed because they have affiliation to certain political parties. Mr. Speaker, I am very, very disappointed at that argument because this is not the first time in our country that individuals who have been appointed to the highest uh, 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 court of our land have political uh, backgrounds. Mr. Speaker, let me make references to such individuals. One of them, one of them 
is Justice uh, Cobia and Justice Apple, who currently uh, are the Supreme Court. Mr. Speaker, they were appointees of the then PNDC uh, uh, government, and they were appointed under the NDC government. Mr. Speaker, nobody raised concerns when these individuals were appointed. Secondly, Justice Boom and Justice Gwadi, in fact, Justice Gwadi is a two-term NDC MP. Justice Gwadi is a two-term NDC MP. Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, he is at Ho High Court serving and he's working excellently. So, Mr. Speaker, when, the, in fact, he even presided over the election petition that involved Honorable John Amehu, Peter John Amehu, and we didn't raise any concern. The NDC was happy to send election petition to a former MP who was current a judge. And today, you stand in this house to complain that somebody has an MPP affiliation and should not be appointed. How double standard can you display in this house? So, Mr. Speaker, let us not give merit to these statements from the NDC. Let us focus on the competence of the individuals that have been nominated by His Excellency the President and give them the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, how are these individuals selected? And I, 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 I will forgive um, Honorable Muntaka because he's not a lawyer. He has not been in the practice. So his assessment of how people must be nominated, I will forgive him. But Mr. Speaker, anybody who has been trained as a lawyer in this country understands how judges are appointed. In fact, Mr. Speaker, one personal experience is that I, as a young lawyer, as a young lawyer, was in a matter with Justice Apple when he was a practicing lawyer on the same day when his name was mentioned to go to the Supreme Court. He was a practicing lawyer. Mr. Speaker, he had not even had one day of a judge experience. How do you question somebody? And that was done, that appointment was done by President John Mahama and the NBC. How do you question President Akufuado's appointment of an individual who has served two years as a judge? Two years as a judge at the high court. Know, know, you know, can appoint somebody who's a practicing on. lawyer. Yes, I'm not for example. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. Mr. Members, can I have some order, please? I want to listen to him. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I heard my honorable colleague say that uh, there is a future NDC MP. We, we, we don't have any. I refer honorable member to honorable member. We don't have a future NDC MP. Honorable member. We have sitting members of parliament. If you heard future, you heard wrongly. He mentioned names. He said a two-time MP here. Wendy is a sitting high court judge in Hope. This is the fact. And he proceeded by concluding that a future NPC MP. He didn't say that. We don't have future NPC MP. He didn't say that. We are sitting members of parliament. Madam, please continue. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, clearly, my friend didn't sleep well last night, and that is why he's hearing two terms as future. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, another allegation that has been made by uh, my colleague on the other side, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Suhini, said that after the committee hearing, some of the members complained about the competence of one of the nominees. Mr. Speaker, I want that record to be expunged because there was no such discussions of unsatisfactory performance or incompetence by any of the nominees. Mr. Speaker, that is not even contained in this report, and I don't know where he's getting that information from. And I plead that we expunge that information from the, from the hazard. Mr. Speaker, clearly the competence of the nominate, nominated judges are clearly displayed. And, and if you read paragraph 4a, the perceived lack of transparency in the progression of judicial officers. Mr. Speaker, the nominee even took time to explain to the committee that the, the, uh, the system, the judicial service 
is a way that they assess every judge and every magistrate in our country. He explained that at the end of every legal year, judges are required to submit judgments and rulings to the evaluation department of the judicial service. But he's not privy to what and how these considerations are done. So, Mr. Speaker, there is a format, a system, a process by which individual judges and magistrates of our country are assessed by the judicial system. So it makes them accountable. It is therefore unthinkable for anybody in this House to say that there is no basis for His Excellency to nominate the people that he has put before us. So, Mr. Speaker, clearly the concerns about competence is out of place. These individuals have shown that they, are merit, they, they merit the opportunity to serve at the highest level. And it will not be the first time or the last time anybody with a political uh, background will be nominated to the highest court uh, of the land. Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the previous people who have been nominated to the, court, uh, the Supreme Court of Ghana have proved that their political backgrounds really do not matter when it, comes to, when it comes to dealing with legal issues. Legal issues are assessed on basis of the law and basis of the facts. So, Mr. Speaker, let us, and, and the evidence before the court, let us disregard all these uh, baseless uh, sentiments and approve these individuals that have been nominated by His Excellency the President to go to the Supreme Court. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Now, leaders, do the leaders wish to co contribute to this debate? No, very well. Enough members, that brings us very well. Mr. Speaker, the minority, minority is on three each. Okay, okay. We have done three each. No, I didn't, we didn't we hear you. She said she was going to allow leaders. Ah, okay. We have done three each. You are now doing it. Okay. We agreed on three contributors each, and we have done three each, haven't we? I think that's enough. That brings us to the end of the debate of the report. Now, our rules are clear. And where we are not at idem, the recommendation is not by consensus. We make the decision by a secret ballot. In this case, I think we will now defer to the class at table to organize and prepare members. Yes, Honorable Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I wasn't at the presenting meeting, but the information that I had was that the Speaker has indicated that he wants to be in the chair to preside over the voting. If that is true, the Speaker, then we can put that aside, awaiting the Speaker, and deal with the, the revenue bills. And deal with the revenue bills, debate them, and then when we are through, the Speaker comes. We take, we take all of it. Speak, amen. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I agree with the leader, because we are about to pave the way for the voting. But yesterday, we decided that the Common Fund will come here with their formula. Mr. Speaker, as I can see, the Common Fund Administrator is sitting right there. So instead of starting, instead of starting a new business, instead of starting a new business, I can hear them say no. You want the vote, isn't it? We should, be, we should break into committee of the whole and consider uh, the, 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 the Common Fund. Oh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, apart from that, then, Mr. Speaker, can you restrain my colleagues? Honourable Member, order. Order, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Either we allow the Common Fund Administrator to brief us all, we wait, or you, you suspect. Because, because I know, or we, we suspend, we suspend a way for Mr. Speaker to come for us to take the food, Mr. Speaker. Because this is a major, this, the, 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 Mr. Speaker, the revenue bills are a major undertaking, and we are thinking that we need enough time to do that. So instead of starting and stopping, we should.
and we should suspend and allow Mr. Speaker to come to the chair. So we take your vote, Mr. Speaker. to my colleague, but it's important we communicate the facts. It's important we put the facts across. Speaker, with respect to my colleague, Minority Chukwe, today a conflict, today a conflict, let's speak you bear me out. Among the items that were considered to be taken on the floor, we never mentioned the common fund. These were the items we talked about. We talked about the Supreme, motion on the Supreme Court Justice. We also talked about taking the question on the ministerial and deputy ministerial nominees. And then, of course, the financial revenue bills. The common fund matter was an agreement between you and I. Of course, the meeting we had at leadership over supersedes the meeting the two of us have. So please, this is not a matter we have to split our heads over. We shouldn't split our heads over this. The Speaker has given indication we are ready to take the votes. In the, speak in the absence of the Speaker, we can go on. Right? The Speaker is here. Exactly. So we go ahead and take the vote. We go ahead and take the vote. We are ready for the vote. We are ready for the vote. All right, members. I've heard both sides now. Can I have some order, please? Can I have some order? No, Mr. Speaker, I will give you the floor, Honorable, as agreed at a conclave, after the debate, we will take the vote. Mr. Speaker has just sent his class to advise me that he's here. So the table office will start preparing while the Speaker comes to take, uh, to take the chair, please. The Speaker will be here in a moment to take the chair and then we'll proceed with the vote. Thank you. So, Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagben is expected to take the seat any moment from now. Just gone by the debate on the motion on the appointment committee's report on the nomination, President Okufuado's nominations for appointments as justices of the Supreme Court. There were four nominations that were done by the President. Two of them have been approved and two of them are outstanding. The two outstanding is Justice Ernest Yaoga Ewu and also Justice George Kingsley Kunsin. These two judges have been outstanding for a while now, and Parliament has just concluded a debate. You've heard the spirited debate from the minority who say they are opposed to the two persons going to the Supreme Court. When it comes to Justice Ernest Yaogaiu, they say that he was a member of the New Patriotic Party. He served as the party's parliamentary candidate in the whole central constituency at some point in his career and should not be elevated to the high office of justice of the Supreme Court. They, they also have concerns about the role Justice Kinsley Kumsin played as regards to the um, Edra Committee report that was published some months back. And so very shortly when the Speaker of Parliament comes in, we expect that the Electoral Commission booth and other things that are usually available would be, would be put on the days and the election will happen. The, the sites are, are pumped up as you would have seen from the scenes in Parliament. Both members on the minority and majority side are here in their numbers and the expectation is that very soon that vote will happen. This is the rolling coverage right here on Joy News. As to some of the contentious hearings we've been having in Parliament in recent times. First, yesterday you heard that debate, conf confrontational debate as regards to the president's nominations for ministers and deputy ministers, the debate concluded, but the vote did not happen. This morning, that vote is expected to happen when the Speaker of Parliament himself, Alban Bagben, takes his chair. Currently in the Speaker's seat is Joseph Oseusu, MP for Bekwai, and first Deputy Speaker. He has shepherded the debate on President Kufado's nominees for the Supreme Court. And so, any moment from now, when the Supreme Court when the, chief, uh, the, the, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagben, takes a seat, then the vote will happen. But we also expect some other crucial business to be taken on the floor today. The business having to do with some three tax, revenue, tax, tax measures that have been put be before Parliament, the excise duty amendment bill, 
the income tax amendment bill number two, the growth and sustainability levy, which is totally uh, expected to um, accrue about four billion Ghana cities in terms of revenue for the state. The minority say that they have some concerns. Government says that this is a prior auction. It's a, it's a matter that must be dealt with before government can get an IMF deal. The minority say they are still opposed to that. So that business is still expected to come to parliament. There's also the matter having to do with President Ekufado's nominees for ministers, deputy ministers, and ministers of state and some substantive ministers. At the beginning of this parliament, President Ekufado informed the House that he has nominated Brian Achampon to become the Minister for Food and Agriculture. MP, he's the MP for Abetifi, also Katie Hammond for Minister for Trades and Industry. Katie Hammond is the MP, is, is an MP on the majority side. Also have Stephen Asamoah Boatin. Immediately, he was the boss of state interest and governance, uh, um, uh, accountability, that SIGA. And then Mohammed Amin Adams, has also been nominated as Minister of State at the Finance Ministry. Um, Obi Amoy is currently a Deputy Minister at the Local Government Ministry. He's also been nominated to become um, a Minister of State at the Local uh, local Government Ministry. And then finally, Stephen Amoy, MP for Insha, so having been nominated as Deputy Minister designated for Trades and Industry. The minority yesterday engaged in that spirited debate, saying that they will reject the nominations because President Gufado's government is bloated I think the government must reduce its size and not only must the size be removed, some of these ministries can be merged. And so they did that debate yesterday and they concluded only that the, the vote did not happen. And then this morning we expected that will happen. It's drawn into the afternoon. It's about 1.21 now. That vote is yet to happen. So parliament decided that this morning the first order of business they wanted to deal with was the matter of the, the, the Supreme Court Justice nominees, about four of them, have been on the, on, the, on the President's radar. Two of them have already been passed, and they've already taken their seats at the Supreme Court. Two of them are still outstanding. Justice Ernest Yao Gayewu is still contending with the minority, and also Justice George Kinsley Kumsey. Today as well, just like yesterday, leadership of both the NDC and MPP are here in Parliament. We've seen just, uh, um, um, Justin Frimpong Kodia, he's the General Secretary of the NPP. He's taking a seat. He is currently in the chamber with some members of the New Patriotic Party. Um, he's sitting directly opposite the NPP caucus over here. We've also seen the National Chairman of the National Democratic Congress, John Senesi Dunketia. John Senesi Dunketia has just stepped out of the chamber briefly. We understand he will be returning. He is in the company of the NDC's Greater Accra Region Chairman, Ami Ashi, Ami Ashi Mo. He is also here in, in the chamber. So, very soon when Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagman, takes his chair, we, we will be expecting that the members of Parliament will be heading to the booth. It's a secret ballot to elect the, the to, to vote as whether or not they are going to accept the MPs who have been nominated for ministers as well as the Supreme Court Justice nominees. So that is, our, that is still our rolling coverage. There's still a lot of um, um, back and forth, a lot of haggling on the floor of parliament, both, uh, both sides trying to come to some sort of an agreement before that crucial vote happens. If MPs on both sides stick to their guns, it will be interesting to see the results. The NDC MPs have at least 136 MPs. The NDC MPP have 138. But because we know that Sarah Adwasafo is currently not attending parliament, he, she hasn't been here in a while, and NPP would have about 137 of, of, of their members here. So it's been quite a, a very interesting day in parliament. And the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagwin, Expect, expected to walk into the chamber any moment from now. And the NDC MP say they are upbeat about the ability to defeat the nominees that have been put out by President Kufad, both for the Supreme Court and also for the ministerial nominees.
and that vote is expected to happen any moment from now when the Speaker of Parliament walks in. I can see some frustration there on the face of the minority, majority, majority um, leader, as well as the Speaker of Parliament, who the Deputy Speaker, who are not really enthused about what is expected to happen. So the, the leader of the House is on his feet. With respect, I think we have a signal that the Speaker is within the presence. He wants to come and preside while we take the vote. We have not suspended sitting. And in the meantime, if we can take the revenue bill before he comes, because we cannot wait here doing nothing when the House has been suspended. But we can't continue to wait here. The House has not been suspended. There's business for us to transact. And it's not here. I'll we'll have to sit down doing nothing. I'll plead with you. Let's start with the revenue bill. We are not going to take any vote. I'm not going to take a decision on that. I will do the consideration of bills when we when he comes. It will be part of it. If we have to vote on them, it will be part of it. Otherwise, would anybody then agree that this is deliberate? Today is Friday. And if you have to wait, the speaker, let me then sound that the three businesses certainly we are going to transact. Whatever happens, the three businesses we are going to transact, even if you have to sit up to 12 midnight, for the greatest respect. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you recall yesterday, when the agreement was after the debate this morning, we will come and vote on the uh, ministerial appointment. When we went to conclave, the issue of the Speak judges, the, the issue of the judges was brought, and we agreed that we come in, and then we do the debate. And after the debate, we will now vote on the ministerial appointment and vote on the judges. That was the agreement. So you should go ahead and vote. And then after that, we will now look at what time we have and see what other business we can do. That's what we agreed on. You talked about the other economic uh, bills. Okay, and we now. said after we have taken all of this. So, so, then we, vote. so we are at a point where we should be voting. So and it has been suggested that you are the speaker is coming to take over. And we said that you can take a suspension while we wait for the speaker. So if that is the case, we can take a suspension. Because oh, where we are right now oh, is to vote. So, Mr. Speaker, that is where we are, and nothing else. Honorable colleagues, we are here because I've asked the table of to set up the voting system. Mr. Speaker will come when the place is ready, he will take it over. But the table of to set the place up. Mr. Speaker, to take the chair.
So the stage is set and any moment from now, the vote on the approval of Supreme Court Justice nominees will happen and the Speaker and the table of his will call the MPs name by name. We've seen there on the, on the platform the, the, the Electoral Commission insignia, that tools and other, um, um, other um, mechanisms that are used to conduct elections also here in Parliament. So the approval of the Supreme Court Justice nominees will now happen with the booth now being set up. We do not know yet if the vote on the ministerial nominees will also happen concurrently. We, we are awaiting the Speaker to give further directions on that. But any moment from now, that vote will happen. The booth are now set and what the House is awaiting is for Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagman, who is now taking his seat, to give further directions and further instructions as to how this election is to be conducted and what MPs will be expected to do and not do. We, there have been a few votes on the floor of Parliament since um, this eighth Parliament began. The first one regarding the, 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 first one regarding the election of the Speaker of Parliament himself, Urban Bagman, which resulted in a shock result of him winning and becoming the first Speaker in this First Republic who does not belong to the President's party to have become uh, a Speaker of Parliament. We, uh, we also had a, a similar vote when Koji Oponkro, Mahawa Kumsen, and a host of other nominees of President Ekufado for ministers were subjected to another secret vote and they all still true with some members of the minority even voting with their majority colleagues to pass those ministerial nominees so the whips are doing their job i, I can see frank and Pre giving some directives as to how he wants the the booth to be set up and the speaker is now speaking as to how this is supposed to happen I've just been giving a detailed brief as to what transpired this morning. And yesterday at the meeting of the Joint Caucus, Honorable Members, I hope you are listening to what I'm saying. Because I want you to guide me as to the procedure we should adopt. We have a guide from our standard orders, but definitely in some of these situations, to get things smoothly done, we need the members themselves to be involved in the final decision. Yesterday, for good reason, we deferred taking a decision on the motion to adopt the report of the Appointments Committee in giving a prior approval to the appointment of ministers and deputy ministers. We deferred it to today. This morning, we've gone through that one, the motion dealing with the nominations of members to the Supreme Court. I've been briefed that at the joint caucus meeting, you agreed to have both taken at the same time 
that is the vote on the judges and the ministers. I want to know whether that is the case so that we know the system to adopt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I was at conclude this morning. We have said that these are separate motions. Uh, decision on the appointment of the ministers and uh, judges are separate motions, and we agree that we'll vote on them separately. That was the agreement. Yes. So, Mr. Speaker, um, we agreed to vote on them separately at the same time. So, we are going to have one ballot box, just as on the national elections, we vote presidential and parliamentary. You are given a ballot for presidential, you vote, you put it in a box. You are given a ballot on parliamentary, you vote, you put it in a box. So, the position is that... We are going to have two that ballot boxes, have separate voting, but at the same time. That's so you go, the, the clerk gives you one ballot paper which has the list of the ministerial nominees. You finish voting, you pick another one for the Supreme Court judges, and then you put it in. Mr. Speaker, that was the understanding. And Mr. Says, your first deputy, the first deputy speaker who presided. Uh, is here to validate the point of this I oh, thank you, sir. Yes. Mr. Mr. Speaker, it is true. Mr. Speaker, it is true that the respected deputy leader made the suggestion a conflict that we should do what he is describing. We said no, because of the controversies. Mr. Speaker, there are, there are two different motions. We are already here to take the vote. We should go through the first motion, take the vote on the ministers or the judges, count it, declare it, then we go to the vote on the second one, Mr. Speaker. There was no agreement that we should do what he said. He did make the proposal, but there was no decision on that. That is the fact, Mr. Speaker. Honourable members, let's listen to the person who presided over the proceedings of the joint caucus meeting, the first deputy speaker. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is true that I proposed that we do the two votings together, two separate ballot boxes. From one end, you continue to the other end. There was no agreement between the two sides. So I told them that that actually decision is to be made by Mr. Speaker. So if we can't agree, we should leave that and come here. So we we'll leave you to make the discretion. That was how we concluded. Well, Honourable Members, in this matter, I am the Electoral Commission. After listening to the Chair, I cannot listen to you again. Please. I agree with those who are proposing that there are different motions and we should take them differently. And so we will take yesterday's one first. 
the one dealing with the nominations of the ministers and deputy ministers. Then I will declare the results. Then after that, we will deal with what happened today. We have enough time to do that. I will be here throughout. Please, honorable members, a secret vote. I want to emphasize on the word secret vote. If there is any slight evidence that the vote is not secret, it will not be accepted. Without that, as you know, I survived through secret voting, so I treasure secret voting. I am the electoral commission. Yes, so uh, let's start with the vote on the ministerial nominations. What we are going to do is that we are using the list, the list of names of the members of parliament. And so you all be seated. And when your name is mentioned, you move forward to be given the ballot. You go and vote, and then move back to your seat. Your seat. We are not going to talk about people standing. You are to be seated. Your name will be mentioned, and that is why we need you to be quiet. If not, you will not hear your name to come to vote. We have the ballot papers, they are ready. Yes, Honorable Mama Yelga. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you have explained some aspects of the voting procedure. In the case of the, both the ministers and the judges, we have a number of nominees. You haven't explained to us how the ballot paper is going to be presented in terms of the nominees and then the provision for voting. When it was you alone, Mr. Speaker, it was clear, it was just you and then provision was made for voting for or against. But since there are several nominees, how is the format of the ballot paper going to look like? We just need some clarification. This is a sample ballot paper. Ministers and deputy ministers, one ballot paper. The boxes, yes and no, are indicated against the names and the proposed sectors they are to preside over. So you indicate in the box whether yes or no. So there is one. We have a way of counting, and then we will then ask you to nominate tellers to be available during the counting. So please, this is for the ministers. The judges we have, there are two categories. 
two names, they've traced two names, I'm told there's not much controversy concerning that. Then the other two, where you have some uh, differences, they are also together. The ballot paper is there, I can show you a sample. Honorable members, this is a sample ballot for the judges. Yes, Honorable Mama Yarga. Mr. Speaker, yes, uh, we just wanted to also know whether you brought a CI to this house to govern the design of the ballot paper. <laughs> <laughs> CI on what? A CI on the design of this ballot paper. The design of the ballot paper. <laughs> Member, you are. Um, are you a five ten? Five ten. Five ten member of parliament. This is from practice and procedure. Please, there are too many of you on your feet. We don't need any disruptions, we don't need obstruction, we don't want to hear, you have to listen to us. Honourable members, we are now about to commence the process. When your name is mentioned, please walk up to the table office. You will be given a ballot. You proceed through the booth, do your voting, 
and get back to the table office where the ballot box is. We don't want many of you piled at the table office. Please. Yes, Deputy Minority Whip. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. The Speaker, we are requesting for copies of the voters register to be given to our two polling agents. One, I will sit here and be marking, and the Honorable Majority, Minority Chief Whip will stand by that place and also be marking. So as, as polling agents, we need copies of the register, and we must set that good example. This is a handful request. Honorable member, you are completely out of order. I have indicated that we are going to use the list of the members of parliament. That is the register. And we have indicated we have indicated that we will call you by your name and your constituency and you walk out here to the glare of every person gathered here, including the gallery. And so if you are an imposter, we will identify you. I insist that this is secret voting. Secret means secret. Please, I will be very, very vigilant myself as the electoral commissioner. And I have the power to disqualify a voter. Yes, so let's start. We will go by alphabetical order. Yes. Majority, Deputy Majority Leader. Honorable members, be seated. The time for campaigning is over. Yes, Deputy Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I am on my feet to seek your guidance on Article 78. of the Constitution, as well as Order 172.4. Mr. Speaker, Article 78 provides, and with your leave, I read, that ministers of state shall be appointed by the President with the prior approval of Parliament from among members of Parliament or persons qualified to be elected as members of Parliament. Except that the majority of ministers shall be appointed from among members of Parliament. Mr. Speaker, for my purpose, the emphasis is the prior approval. And the Constitution under Article 78 does not state the procedure for achieving this prior approval. However, Mr. Speaker, if you go to 
Article 110 of the Constitution. The same Constitution says that Parliament subject to the provisions of the Constitution by standing orders regulate, regulate its own procedure. Mr. Speaker, we have had several occasions in this House where we have used practice to, to set aside the standing orders and lean on the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, there are some other provisions in the Constitution that talk about secret ballots when it comes to electing or removing a person from public office. Mr. Speaker, what we are doing is not an election. We are approving. And I know that Order 1724 provides that the committee shall report to Parliament within three days after it has concluded its proceedings when Parliament is sitting. Parliamentary approval of persons recommended for appointment shall be by secret ballot or by consensus. So, Mr. Speaker, although the Constitution talks about prior approval in general terms and does not provide a specific procedure for achieving that, our own standing orders create two main avenues of disjointive effect. Mr. Speaker, I am bringing this argument forward because yesterday, and I'm quoting my respected colleague, Honorable Atufosi, and my respected colleague, uh, Honorable Anod Dompre, when there arose an occasion to have further engagement on this matter, I recall that Honorable Atufosi said that we are all members of parliament and that our colleagues in this house, that we should not take ourselves through that burden of having to engage in a secret ballot. Mr. Speaker, that move occasioned some discussions. And Honorable Anod Dompre, in applying for suspension, relied on that to say that, Mr. Speaker, we want a one-hour suspension so that we could explore the possibility of dealing with that issue. Mr. Speaker, the argument here, the argument here is very simple. Our colleagues in the minority, who are 136, 136, have made it clear that they are opposed to these nominees. So, Mr. Speaker, I am saying that we are masters of our own rules. Mr. Speaker, if, 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 if we decide as a House to be masters of our own rules without sinning against the Constitution, we will be acting within the confines of the Constitution. This, this is a subsidiary legislation that we have enacted. That day in, day out, for our purpose, we take a decision and say that this is a matter of practice, and we go by it. All I am saying that, Mr. Speaker, to the extent that at Order 172.4 gives a disjointed effect in its import of what is required of us in taking such a decision, and one is by consensus. If we are unable to achieve consensus, and we know as a fact that the whole 136 of the minority are against, and the whole 137 of the minority majority are for. Mr. Speaker, I invite this House, I invite this House to construe and appreciate within, within the context of practice to mean that, Mr. Speaker, we can adopt the vehicle 
of that consensus, Mr. Speaker, which would mean that the decision for the approval, because we are not elected, we are not elected, so Mr. Speaker, the argument I'm making is that the provision for secret ballots in this South is not provided for by the Constitution. And let us know, any student of Constitution knows that we cannot, by an announcement, create a law that would overtake, overshadow, or be at variance with the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, I repeat that we as a House have the mandate under Article 110 to enact our own regulations. But, Mr. Speaker, we cannot, in enacting our own regulations, seek to enact a law that would be at variance with the Constitution. Because, Mr. Speaker, anywhere that the Constitution wanted a secret ballot, like in your case, the cons can I finish this constitutional argument so that you can meet, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, I'm protected by you. Mr. Speaker, it is my submission that anywhere the Constitution had intended a secret ballot, Mr. Speaker, it is my contention that anywhere the Constitution had intended a secret ballot, the Constitution has said so. Two, where the Constitution expected of us to enact a regulation to guide our conduct, the Constitution has also provided for. It is therefore my case again, Mr. Speaker, that to the extent that the Constitution gave a general approach to guide us, we as a House cannot through our enactment restrict and provide for a very thinner approach in achieving that purpose of approval. We are not elected. And anywhere the Constitution has talked about electing a public officer, it emphasized secret ballots. And that was the case. So, Mr. Speaker, I shall learn. I shall learn. Honorable Deputy Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. Speaker. You have landed. You have landed. Mr. And Mr. you have landed very well. Yes, you have landed very well. I'm sure you know one very popular former member of parliament called Philip Basta. You know Philip Basta. Mr. Speaker. Do you know Philip Basta? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I know, I know that you have not prejudiced my submission. Mr. Speaker, I know that you enjoy debates and you always want us to learn. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, if you are putting the question to me whether or not I know the past, Mr. Speaker, a, my submission does not in any way amount to the past. He was a well-known member of parliament and by his practice, the word filibustering was formed. You are the filibuster of this house. So I have, I have elevated you to a very high position because that was an initiative and a practice that has been adopted all over the world. And I've seen that in you. And so that is why you just done. Definitely, as speaker, I will just overrule you and we will proceed. <laughs> Honourable members, we are just creating space to finish up with all the nitty-gritty of the process. That's why I'm allowing this. We have given you now copies of the list of members so that you can go through as we call you up to vote. Have you got the copies? Yes, yes. Mr. Speaker, we have two copies as you directed. Okay. Majority side, you got the copy, the list.
Yes. Mr. Speaker, I encourage my colleague to speak to the mic that, yes, he's got two copies as well. It's important, Mr. Speaker. The majority is that we've got two copies of the members' list. Mr. Speaker, he should not invite me into unnecessary battle. He should not. Who has complained? Who is complaining? Marshal Department, please get ready to perform their duties. Read your standard orders. You get to know the role of the Marshal Department. Yes. I think the arrangement that I'm seeing here, the arrangement that I'm seeing here, the, no, but the point person will decide how to vote in one of them and drop the ballot here. Oh, okay, so just one ballot. One, one box. That's all right. I, we will not inc encourage crisscrossing. So, honorable members from my left, the ballot box is here. Clerk at table, please, let's start. Abaka Samuel Erickson. Repeat. Abaka Samuel Erickson. members, please be on your seat.
honorable members, please be at your seats. Honorable members, either you want to vote or you don't want to vote. If you want us to conduct the vote to indicate our prior approval, resume your seats. Please, if not, I will suspend sitting. It's in the standard orders. person to make contribution. Please resume your seats. You are all campaigning and you are expecting your constituents to vote for you. Yet you are strong. members, if you were listening to me, I invited the personnel of the Marshal Department to get ready. So we have some personnel from the Marshal Department on my left, and we have some on my right. The purpose is for them to perform their duty when called upon by the Speaker. The standing orders are very clear. 
If you doubt it, read your standing orders. And so we are going to start. The voting is just about to happen. There's some back and forth over how the, the, the ballot booth should be, should be placed. I've seen the majority chief with Frank and Prayer go to the clerks at table on a number of occasions. He, he, he is not so enthused about how the ballot boxes have been positioned. The speaker is imploring on Frank and Prayer to take his seat so that a vote can happen. The speakers, the, the, the table office started mentioning names. He actually mentioned the MP for Shama, and Mr. Baka, but the vote, he, he, he did not vote at that time. And so more of that expected to happen. I mean, clearly the sides very, very, very agitated about the process and what they think should happen. The speaker already warning that if this agitation continues, he will be forced to suspend sitting. But the 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 votes sitting here, you can see that the the ballot um, the box on the left is tilted towards you. The same thing, the box on the right should be tilted towards you. So we avoid any intrusion from the right. But the marshal keeps turning it to the other side. That's what I'm complaining. If you turn it towards me, that's right. of the first of this speaker. I think the ballot box on this side has been tilted to your side. In fact, we are worried that you will even see the ballot. I'm suggesting that you allow the first of this speaker to come up and show us exactly where he wants it. Honorable members, let me assure you that where I sit, I can't see anybody indicating where the person is voting. I can't. I can't. Both ballot boxes, I can't see. The ballot books, I can't. So you are safe. But the doubt, the doubt is deep. The lack of trust in each other is really deep. So please, the right thing will be done. Yes, Majority Chief. I think I would respect, I think uh, this is a point that we shouldn't belabor. All of us are trying to help the process to be studied free and fair. Speaker, Speaker, one of the uh, approaches that will help us to avoid uh, things not being transparent is that we on your right side will vote on your left side. And then, what's on the left side? 
It's a little bit of a melee here. General Secretary Jones receding it here in your shot. I mean, clearly overlooking his side and urging them on and asking them to toll the party line. You just heard there from Frank and Adam Bray insisting that the vote should happen at cross purposes so that the majority side would rather vote on the left of the speaker than the minority members vote on the right side of the speaker. The minority leader is on his feet to respond to that. Clearly our brothers on the majority side are afraid to vote today. Mr. Speaker, the antics they are showing clearly shows that they are not ready to vote today, and they are afraid. They are clearly afraid. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker the, suggestion, the suggestion by the majority chief whip indicates that they want to come and sit this side of the house. Mr. Speaker, if they are in hurry to come to your, le your, your left, that is the opposition, we will welcome them to come and sit here so that we go and sit there. Mr. Speaker, we will not agree. We will not agree that members on this side should go from this way. Mr. Speaker, concentrate at your back and rather get your back to vote for you. Mr. Speaker, we strongly disagree. Mr. Speaker, our position is that that cannot happen. We disagree. And if they are not ready to vote, if they are not ready to vote, Mr. Speaker, today is Friday. Our colleagues, the Muslim community, we are in a Ramadan period. So, Speaker, then let us suspend sitting and come back next week to continue. If you are not ready. But we are ready. But if you are not ready, let us come back. We can go home and come back next year. By that time, we have to have that. We are open. So, Speaker, friends, friends, they are afraid to vote. They are afraid to vote. If you are ready to vote, go and sit down and let's start the voting. And then we can do the job. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I can assure my colleagues, in fact, when we came in the morning, if you recall, the Honorable Majority Chief, I haven't recognized you. You can't just get up and start speaking. Honorable members, honorable members, I, I think, honorable members, uh, I've made my point. As you know, in this house, the practice has been. Honorable Majority Chief Wayne. Should we resume my seat? Please, resume your seat. I 
Honourable members, I invite the leadership of the House to meet me in my lobby. Sitting, sitting is suspended. Parliament Urban Bagbin has suspended sitting for an indefinite period to meet with leadership of both the minority and majority over the disagreement as to the positioning of the ballot booth and all the issues that have come up so far. You've particularly seen the majority side particularly agitated and asking that the system arrangement be altered in a certain light. The minority side have already been insisting that the vote should go ahead. And so having been there, some significant disagreements over this matter, the Speaker of Parliament has now suspended sitting to go into conclave with the leadership to try and get some agreement before MPs will come back to, to vote. So that, 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 is the, that is the state of play here. And it's, it's, it's really serious the way matters on the floor of Parliament have been degenerating to even a certain point. So the sitting has been suspended for a few minutes for the leadership on both sides to agree on some of these issues. I'll be trying to get some members of parliament to get some comments as to the process so far, but the key disagreement has had to do with how to place the ballot boots that are in your short MPs are clearly not happy about how the thing has gone, but it's a pack chamber so far. I can't really point to uh, 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 a single, a single, uh, a single member of parliament who is not around yet, and I'm trying to get some someone on record to to try and see if we can we can get some sort of understanding as to what has happened. I've been joined here by Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed, Honorable Mutala. So what is going on? I mean, this should be something simple. Go ahead and vote. Why, why all this cacophony? It is very clear the MPP, do, they, do, they don't have the numbers. Our checks, one of my colleagues just drew my attention that there are just 120 in the chamber. It got to time for voting. We finished with the debate. The, the, the polling booths and everything was ready. Then I know don't prefer it was Honorable Afenio Martins who started with his shenanigans, trying to delay the process. Perhaps the people who are not there, they are expecting them to get in here. Now, even when the speaker ruled that we needed to go ahead with the voting, you have Honorable Anu Dampre, who also got up, demanding that they should tell the position of the, the polling booths. I mean, those, those frivolous, very useless, you know, reasons for which the delay is happening. Now, unfortunately, I was not expecting our minority leader to make the statement he made when he said that if they are not prepared to vote, then because of Ramadan, we should have the, the voting done next week. And I, I, I totally disagree with him. It is very clear the MPP don't have the numbers, and that is why we are insisting that we will do the voting. We have finished with the debate. There is nothing more left to be done, except we go ahead to vote. If they are confident of the numbers they have, why are they running away? They have more, more members of parliament than us. 
Why is it that they are running away? It is very clear. You don't need anybody to tell you. They don't have the numbers. Our 136 members, we are poised to vote in rejecting every single item they brought here. We are not going to cooperate with them on any issue. We are not going to cooperate with them. We are not going to cooperate with them on the issue of the judges, the Supreme Court judges. We are not going to cooperate with them on the issue of the ministers. We are not going to cooperate with them on the issue of the taxes. If they have the numbers, let's go and do the voting. If you think that you have more members than us, let's do the voting. Do you have the numbers on your side? All the 136 members are here present. And we are all poised. We are going to vote in rejecting every single item these people bring to us. The people of this country should be concerned about these actions of these members of parliament. We also got information that some of them were willing to do once again what uh, Carlos Ahenkra did. If they attempt it today, we'll show them that it is not only one woman who gives birth to a very terrible child. Mm. So, Honorable Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed there, heading back to the chamber, he says that they are going to do everything and anything within their power to reject the ministerial nominees. I'm trying to scan around and trying to see if I can beacon some of the majority MPs to join me here to have this conversation. So, Kessel will pan back to the chamber. I'll try and get more people to join me here. This will be our extended coverage of, 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 of sitting here in Parliament where MPs are expected to take a decision on some of these crucial matters that have come up to the floor for a vote. I'll try and get some more majority MPs to join me for this conversation. But there has been clearly some disagreements as to the mode of voting and where the ballot booths have been have been placed and so I'm trying to get a few of the majority MPs as well to try and see if they can join me and have a conversation as to whether they are ready to vote today like their minority MPs have said or they would want this vote to be moved to another day. It's been very very interesting scenes in the house today and the Speaker of Parliament has now just suspended sitting for a few minutes to allow leadership con 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 confer and come back and 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 make a decision on these matters I'm, I'm so i should remind you that leadership of the political parties are here john sedesedun get your national chairman of the ndc has been here throughout he just stepped out We've also had the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, Justin Frimpon Kodia. He's also been here. He also just stepped out of the chamber briefly to, I'm sure, to also have some conversation with their MPs and some leadership as to this rolling controversy. So what has, been, what has been happening so far is that Parliament has been debating uh, the appointment committee report on the Supreme Court nominees. They had concluded a debate on President Ekufado's ministerial nominees last night. And so those two votes are expected to happen here in Parliament. The majority side having some challenges with the positioning of the booth. And they want that to be moved, but the minority insisting that they want to do all the votes today. So it's 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 a rolling coverage here as to what is happening and I'm trying to get some majority MPs to join me. They are all down in the chamber. I'm trying to signal a number of them to join me up here to see if we can have a conversation about the scenes that have been happening in Parliament and whether or not they are ready to, to, to vote as the minority have said. And they say that the, the minority, the majority are afraid to vote because they do not have the numbers. That is their contention. And they, they, they say that the majority are filibustering in the words of the speaker to, to, to try and see if they can wait and get some more of their members to join them before they can vote.
So it's still a uh, live coverage of proceedings here in Parliament. Members of Parliament are expected to vote when the Speaker of Parliament returns from that session with the leadership of the House. There have been some significant disagreements as to where the ballot boxes should be positioned. The majority side felt that the, the way the tilting had been done it was going to affect their members and how they were going to vote. But the minority say that it's because the majority are afraid of a vote. They do not have enough numbers, as you have heard, the Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed. Very soon, I'm expecting one majority MP to join me up here to try and see if we can get some understanding as to what their strategy is, what their game plan is. Are they ready for a vote? Are they going to vote now? Do they have all their members here? And what they make? of the way the arrangements have been in the house but so far i personally i've been trying to do my own count to try and see if the numbers are at par i've seen very empty very few empty seats on the majority side i've seen very uh, very few empty seats if any at all because some of the mps have gotten down they've gone into the coffee shop on the minority side i can only see abdo question seats empty all other chairs have been filled and this is the day some of President Kufado's nominees will know their fate as to whether or not they get to be approved as ministers or not. So, Kese, I have um, the Member of Parliament for, uh, uh, for Doma East joining me here to have a brief conversation on what is, what is happening. So, Honorable Portun Berima, what is the strategy? What is going on? Are you minority guys that you are afraid of a vote? Is that so? That is not so. The speaker, the speaker have just adjourned the whole sitting just for the leadership to sit and have that discussion and come back. Nobody is afraid of numbers. Do you have your numbers? Everything is intact. Are you confident? We are confident. So what is the thing is about? It, it's, not, it's not about being confident. It's about for what is for Ghana. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's about competence, we can question it. But it's not about competence. It's just about party decisions. And we cannot condone party decisions in the parliament. Which party decision are you talking about? Of course, the minority is saying that yes, the party is saying they should not they should reject the ministers because they think the, uh, the president has bloated uh, ministries. Whichever way. Mm. But you, you cannot bring party issues here in the parliament of Ghana. Is it not that your side may also be afraid that some of your members may vote against the ministerial nominees? Like ah. it happened during Bagbin. Oh, One I of mean, you voted for Bagbin. Um, it happens, but I don't think we are not in situation again. Mm. We are resolute, we are confident that our team is going to ensure that the president's nominees are approved and are coming to work and help us get what we want. Exactly that. Are you sure the vote is going to happen today? I mean, that is in the hands of the speaker. So, is it, is it, is it that there's been no form of agreement on both sides? Because some of the issues your majority whip has raised, for instance, about the positioning of the, of the, of the ballot booth. How is that important? Where the booth the, is, in, is, is, the, is Both the standing orders and the constitution says clearly there should be a secret voting you know, or secret balloting. Why do you want to instigate your people that they should show it? But why do you also want we've to heard, to cross no, purposes? because we've had people, we've had seniors and leaders telling their people that make sure you show your, 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 your voting agent. And we are saying, no, that shouldn't be. But let's cross, uh, I, mean, I mean, vote so that we can all be certain. We can all be happy about it. That's all. Uh, Mutala Mohammed was speaking to me earlier on. He, he, he alleges that some of you want to snatch ballot papers. Is that so? Ah, for what? But during the speaker's election, we saw some of your who, side. Who did that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't recall that now. I don't so, recall that. maybe before I let you go down there again, you are telling me that your side is resolute. You are confident that if this vote happens, you are going to win. You, and that the ministerial nominees are going to be approved. The justices are going to be approved. Is that so? We can confidently assure you that. Thank you very much, Honorable Portun Berima. Honorable Portun Berima is MP for Doma. is telling me that his side are excited. They are also confident that they are going to win if the vote happens. The Speaker of Parliament has suspended sittings for a few minutes. He wasn't specific as to how long this suspension will take, but the leadership on both sides have all gone in there now. And the expectation is that when they come in, they will, they will, they will, they will announce the modalities for the vote. So if Kessie can pan back into the, the chamber so that I can engage uh, Blessed. Blessed, so this is, this is the situation in Parliament. Very exciting scenes uh, here. The majority side, the minority side, clearly upbeat 
about what they want to do here. They are saying that they expect this vote to happen. They know they will win if it comes to that. So, bless you, that is the situation.